Cheers. Cheers to... A new day. Let's keep it simple. My body feels so sore. And it's for no other reason other than yoga. One teaspoon black seed oil. I need water first. One teaspoon black seed oil. It's, it's about to be 11 a.m. signed up for 11.15 yoga class, but I decided that I'm going to go later in the afternoon. So I canceled her. And I'm going to take my time getting dressed and getting ready. I'm going to take a shower. I want to go to Target to pick up that rosemary oil. It is an hour commute to get there. Just throwing that out there because if I take an overly extended amount of time to get ready, I'm going to have a repeat of yesterday and possibly not make it to my 5.45 yoga class. And that is not the plan here. I hope you are well. My name is Casey, welcome to another vlog. This is the first thing I'm doing this morning, so if I'm appearing kind of out of it, kind of smacked, my body does feel like I got hit by a car. So I'm just sore because we like working out. Fitness is good for the brain, am I right? Okay, let's start my day. Um, good morning. Brown jacket, just because it's cold outside, I'm not trying to wear a jacket at all, to be frank. Black long sleeve. Underneath I have my nerd jacket. I mean, shirt. The shirt is just perfect. It's the perfect decision fatigue shirt. And then I have my AYM pants, some leg warmers, and my boots. Let's go. Ladies first. See your way out the door. Don't let the door hit you on the ass. Hate to watch you go, but I love to watch you leave. The door is that way. Do you need me to assist you? Hey, it is about to be 10 p.m. I'm gonna make banana bread. Today I went to Target and I got a pan specifically for this moment. I've been holding on to these banana bag bread mixes for a few weeks now and I didn't have a pan. Now we do. Oh my God, I have neon hair in my eyes. So if I'm looking like my eyes are strained, exhausted, burning, it's because I have cat hair all in my eyes. Anyways, I have a mug of tea here it's mint tea it's been steeping for the total totality to, total duration of madagascar 3 so that's like an hour and 40 minutes don't think i've ever seen i didn't even know there was a third madagascar it was enjoyable very childlike but it was very enjoyable so i'm gonna have this tea to sip as i make banana bread hi my name is casey welcome to a new video you know, I've learned that you're not supposed to squeeze a tea bag after it's steeping. Just a random fact for you, if you never knew that. Fun fact. I have two options here. They're from the brand Gonana, which I think is really adorable. It's a good spin on the word banana. I have one that's just a regular banana bread mix, and then I have this one that's chocolate chip banana bread mix. Because I've been having such a extreme chocolate tooth it's not even a sweet tooth it's a chocolate tooth it's that straightforward i'm gonna go with the chocolate chip banana bread mix and um devour it shortly throughout the week devour it quickly throughout the week i guess they're both correct because if you hang on it'll shortly be devoured throughout the week but if you hang on it'll quickly be devoured throughout the week so I'm, i have options again this is my first time making banana bread i don't like baking too much so anytime you hear me see me baking it'll probably be my first time making that baking good right now i have sweet potato pie on my checklist of items that i've ever baked this is a gluten-free grain-free which is gluten-free like i just said this is a gluten-free vegan nut-free banana bread mix the ingredients are very simple it has it all listed here for me on the back i'll read it to you three medium bananas if super ripe, use two. You don't want it to be over sweetness overload, unless you're me. I come sweetness overload. One tablespoon of maple syrup. You can sub agave or honey. I'm gonna be using this agave that I have. It's actually a maple agave blend that I got from Trader Joe's for waffles that I bought. I have frozen waffles in my freezer that I have yet to touch. I have yet to touch this too, because I don't have a toaster. And I could make it on my stove top, but it's not as simple. It's not as convenient, so I haven't done it yet, but we're making use of the agave. Two tablespoons non-dairy milk and some milk of your choice, they have in parentheses. 
It can be whole milk if you like, really. And then we need two tablespoons of melted coconut oil, canned sub canola oil, avocado oil, butter, or yogurt. This appears to be the most simple recipe that I could have possibly gotten my hands on, so I'm thanking the baking gods. Except the baking process is gonna be about 50 to 60 minutes. Time is never really on my side in terms of baking, which is why I don't like baking. The time aspect of baking has never been appealing to me. That's why I prefer to cook. This is some housewife shit. If you're a wife, you don't have to work because your man brings all the money home and you're just finding random hobbies to do for you and your children. That's when you pick, pick up baking. Luckily for me, that's coming in a little bit early. I can bake on my free time because I have a whole lot of free time and a whole lot of dough. That's a baking reference I just tried to pull out there. Anyways, this is still the biggest mixing bowl that I have. If you saw my sweet potato pie video, this is the exact same one. I was in the aisle where there was mad mixing bowls and whisks too. I didn't buy a whisk. I thought about it, but I thought it wasn't really necessary for my baking expertise right now. So I skipped it. I'm literally having an allergic reaction to my cat right now, but it's gonna be edited out. <laughs> so you don't see me back here, scratching my throat, rubbing my eyes, um, fighting for my life. I forced him to sit on my lap as we were watching Madagascar. His weight felt very heavy on my lap. He was very comfortable. And I was really comfortable. He was like a weighted blanket, but an actual cat. And it felt really nice, but now I'm paying the price of having a cat and being allergic to animals. I don't have a whisk, so I'm gonna be utilizing these two mittens once again. There will be cat hair more than likely in the mix. It's gonna be okay. I'm sure I've swallowed many of cat hairs in my life. This is not eyeshadow, this is allergic reaction. Man, I want to give you more information about Gonana in the brand, but I'm struggling to even <laughs> function without scratching my throat. Gonana is a woman-owned brand. They pride themselves in indulging in a wholesome way, meaning guilt-free indulgence if you will. There is a whole little storyline back here where the two girlies are having the time of their life. I look ill. <sighs> Let's tap into their conversation. So this is Annie here, right here, with the banana at her face. Banana phone. I can't focus. Okay, I need to, hold on. Neon's sabotaging me right now. Okay, I'm back. I think I'm, I'm doing a lot better now. I don't know if I'm okay to be precise, but I am doing a lot better. Here's a tip. Uh -huh. Your heart might be large. You might see beauty in these majestic beings we call cats. But if you're allergic to them, I advise you to save yourself to save yourself. Okay, banana bread. I've, I've preheated my oven. 350. Tablespoon scooper. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. The good thing about this is I could just rub it on my arm because coconut oil is very nour nourishing. And it's a really good skin moisturizer. I don't like putting it on the face though because it's too thick and it will clog your pores. But that's just me, my preference. Melting two tablespoons of coconut oil. Ooh. One tablespoon of maple agave syrup. Two tablespoons of melted coconut oil. I have my ripe bananas here. They were sitting in the freezer. They defrosted and now there's a mysterious liquid. Except it's not really that mysterious because you have frozen bananas that have defrosted and now it's banana juice in a black bowl. I'm gonna put them in the mix and I'm gonna use my hands to mix them together. It's pretty gross. I guess I'll pour this juice inside he belongs with his friends. I almost forgot about the milk. Two tablespoons of some type of milk that you prefer. I have this coconut cream that I'm gonna use, but I'm also gonna use one tablespoon of this oat with pea protein. I learned that we shouldn't heat this up. Oh, one tablespoon of coconut cream, one tablespoon of pea protein oat milk. Actually, I decided I'm just gonna do the entire two tablespoons of this. That also just remind me of this. Now we're gonna whisk the bananas, oil, milk, and syrup together until smooth. <laughs> I'm gonna use my hands. I'm gonna make this banana bread. It's gonna be infested with allergies. Does anybody want some of my allergy made banana bread? It has chocolate chunks in it. Mm. I'm gonna be here for a while. This is so relaxing, it's gonna cure my allergies. Ugh. 
adult sign. You just boosted the whisking speed to a five. My whisker is a little broken, so please be patient with us. I got distracted because of my cat and I've never got into our Morgan and Annie dialogue. Shall we begin? Morgan, I'm over diet culture. Tell us to eat this, not that, and taking the joy and ease of, out of healthy living. We need to give people a way to find their true balance again. Be able to indulge without the guilt. See, this is what I was talking about, that guilt-free indulging. They're all about it. That's what the ladies are passionate about. Morgan responds. I couldn't agree more, Annie. And that's what's so great about our mixes. Finally, people can make indulgent and wholesome treats to feed their bodies and souls. Now that's a game changer. Our oven is preheated. I am not ready. I'm gonna rinse my hand and use a fork. I feel the oil gradually becoming thicker on my hands. Gross, but also probably not good for the baking process. Should I try it? Tastes like bananas. Look at all the COVID oil build up. Thankfully, all of those ingredients I was just mixing with my bare hands are nourishing and really good for your skin. Hashtag winning. I'm using a fork to whisk. It says to do it so smooth. I'm going to count that as it being smooth. It's not very smooth, but I think it'll be okay. I honestly don't think it'll get any smoother than it is. Step three. Stir in the dry mix until just combined. And pour batter into pan. Pour a little bit at a time and mix. I think the dry mix makes me feel very hopeful. This looks delicious. Add the rest. I'm about to go back in with my hands because this fork is making a mess. My camera's gonna overheat. I'm having another allergic reaction right here, so don't mind that. While my camera was overheating and like gaining the energy to show himself once again, I mixed our contents. I'm gonna be pouring it into the pan and inserting it into the oven. This process was way faster than I expected. I don't know what I expected. I don't bake. But the longest part, need I remind you, is the bake time, which is gonna be 50 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna try the batter. If this bakes properly, it's going to taste delicious. This is why people have spatulas. Is that what I'm talking about? Am I thinking about a spatula? The thing that is like bendy and it's rubber and you would be able to get right in here and grab all of this without struggling like I am with a fork, a spatula. Because when I hear spatula, I'm thinking about like flipping patties like I'm Spongebob. Switch to a spoon. We have our banana bread. I'm gonna put it in the oven like a brave woman who's not afraid of fire. I could take the heat, I stay in the kitchen. 50 to 60 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 50 minutes. 15 minutes starting now. She got select hearing. Hey Siri, set a timer for 50 minutes. Am I not saying 50? Hey Siri, set a timer for 50 minutes. Okay. Back in my days, we had to go back into the timer and manually do it yourselves. Timer set, 50 minutes. And then I'm gonna check on it and be like, hey, are you doing okay in there? What's the fluffy looking like? Okay, 50 minutes has passed. I'm not feeling allergic to neon. I've had time to recoup, regroup, and recalibrate. It smells like it's ready, but I probed a fork in it twice and it seemed like it needed more time. I honestly think the ends are, they look crispy. They might have cooked too long. This is our work. It is pretty soft. I'm gonna put it back in for five minutes. It needs more, a few more, few more time. Keg is doing, sorry I was feeling a little bit distracted from an allergic reaction. When I open the oven, the heat comes into my face. I have two face lip injection on and it just feels like my lips are gonna burn off. Cast fire. Making banana bread. Whipping up banana bread. Bakers, man. That's me. Quality check part three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks very moist. Oop, we pulled it out early. Don't tell mom. I'm gonna let it cool down for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna have an actual piece. That'll be around 12 a.m. Nice midnight snack. Right on time. I'm gonna cut up this banana bread, put it on the napkin, start munching, and talk to you because I have a lot of energy on my like weighing on me. I've been trying to kind of like ignore it, subside, put it, put it 
you know, just put in the back of my head. But we all know what happens when you do that. It just builds up and then eventually you have a breakdown and then eventually you're crying because you're overwhelmed. I mean, I mean, I guess me personally, that's what I know will happen. Um, so banana bread o'clock. This is what she looks like. She looks very moist, cooked well. I'm very excited. I'm eating it off of napkins. I don't want to make another dish. I'm gonna get comfortable because I'm gonna be talking and standing, standing and talking as I eat this banana bread. I actually wanna talk about this pent up energy that I have within me. Yep, delicious. The outside is a little bit crispier, like it kind of tastes overcooked, but I always prefer my pastries either room temperature or cold. So when that guy goes into the fridge and I have him tomorrow, I, I just know it's gonna be delicious. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to talk to you while I eat this. I say like this past week, I've been feeling like very rushed and not centered and kind of in my head a lot. And I've mentioned that a few times in my most recent videos. Filming for YouTube and expressing myself in the video format has always been a really big interest of mine and passion of mine because it's just, I don't know, no, it's perfect I love talking I love being on camera but I do struggle with putting my everything into something and like prioritizing a hobby to the point where it completely fogs up my brain and when I'm not doing it I'm still thinking about it to the point where I'm like creating little potential scripts in my head that I don't even use but in the long run it just affects when I actually am in front of the camera I'm creating this expectation of how I would like my expression to go and then when I do that it feels less authentic and then when I feel less authentic in front the camera i tend to feel like i'm trying to put up this front for somebody that i'm not which is something i'm never trying to do subconsciously i'm aiming to get better but subconsciously consciously it just makes me worse and i'm really learning how to turn that off it takes out the fun and it takes out the joy of what i like to express and how i like to express myself on youtube i used to always use the term social claustrophobic like social claustrophobia i don't know if it's a real thing but it's something i've always it's the easiest way of me describing it i've always really enjoyed people and being a social butterfly and it's connecting to people and expressing and like laughing and having fun with people but i do get really overwhelmed by the attention of a lot of people and i get really overwhelmed by the presence of a lot of people and i've labeled it as something i call social claustrophobia i also feel kind of vulnerable speaking about this so thoughts aren't flowing but one of my favorite affirmations is vulnerability is my superpower because vulnerability is something to be very proud of and to like wear on your sleeve it's all done i think as creatives and artists and however you want to look at it people with passions in general it's important to like sit in each moment and allow that part of your brain that is taking it step by step moment by moment to fully engulf you into the process my thoughts are very scattered right now i'm speaking in tweets my camera's gonna overheat I brought my school chair because i am not playing around i couldn't figure out what i was trying to say exactly so i went to my desk as i was waiting for my camera to uh, situate itself and i took my pen and i took it to the to the paper what i'm feeling really needs to be addressed and even as i was writing it out i felt the need to cry and if i had went deeper into it i know i for a fact i would have started shedding tears completely disregarding everything i was just talking about which i'm not even sure until i edited it like i think i blacked out a little bit i was speaking in tweets speaking in run-on sentences i just really i don't know what i expressed there but i think a big lesson or actually i know a big lesson for me this year is you're not working to be a creator you're not working to be an artist and you are those things it's hard to separate yourself from wanting to improve i think that when you just are in that state of mind consistently you naturally will improve but when you're really pushing for a headspace that is so hyper fixated on improving you are working against yourself so i guess to tie in all that i was trying to say i've been feeling a lot of pressure from wanting to be good at something i feel passionate about but experience is your best teacher and it's important that you allow yourself to make mistakes make bad art make bad creations because that is the only way you will improve next thing you know you're making your best piece of whatever content um, that you had ever made just because you didn't give up on yourself and you detached from the expectation of improving that is something i struggle with because i want to be good at everything to be honest i come from a place where i wanted validation so bad for doing good like i always felt like i had to prove myself as a kid and that has carried over 
over into my adult life and I'm working on diminishing that and loosening my grip so that I can consistently be really good at things. I tend to make good work and then completely lose interest just because I'm satisfied by that one good thing. I've given myself the pat on the back that I wanted so badly growing up and then I move on to something else where I can struggle, learn how to do it, do good at it, and then again pat myself on the back and then so on move forward. And I don't know who else needs to hear this. I'm not sure. But things don't come as easy. And even if naturally you find that you're really good at something, the moment you want to lean into that and are too aware of your potential, you are working against yourself. So try to loosen your grip a little bit. Give yourself some breathing space. That kind of is really all I had to say. All of that in the beginning just to say that my lesson of the year, somebody else's lesson of the year might be it too, is that you're not working to be who you are. You are who you are. You just have to melt into yourself, be yourself, and accept that you're gonna make mistakes and you're not gonna be good all the time. I think that's all. Tomorrow I have yoga at 12 30 and it's my Friday and then I start my new job on Monday. So I'm gonna be working a lot and I don't know what to expect in my life from that point at all. But I'm just taking it one day at a time, one moment at a time, and allowing myself to adapt and trust in the process of everything. Anyways, release your grip, have fun, stop trying to be perfect at a craft that is not going anywhere like you're gonna be doing it forever long you know i mean that's up to you but just calm your nerves by releasing expectations i feel sick to my stomach i don't know if it's just because the banana bread or like i'm feeling very anxious i also have a crush on somebody and that always makes my stomach feel fucking tied up in a knot it's some really technical girl scout boy scout type knot that's it my name is casey if you made it this far if you watched the whole video it took a turn i thought i would be more excited about making a banana bread it was just too simple and i didn't feel like i don't know all of this like pent-up energy within me is making it hard for me to have fun with little mundane things that i normally would have fun with but I am glad that I was able to speak about this and have this moment and eat banana bread with chocolate in it in the process because every time I talk about something, I feel lighter. That's all. I hope you guys have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow and the next day 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 and the next day. I'm actually that next day, one of those next days might not appear. I'm gonna take a break shortly. I don't know exactly what that means. The way I'm posting videos might change because as you can see I'm putting too much tension and pressure on myself but it also could just be a phase of adapting to my new daily habits. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you took something from this video that was helpful and a little bit inspiring. If you are naturally vulnerable trust that that is a good thing and it's not a weakness. Sure people might try to play with you. That's not for you to change. That's a sign for you to stay away from those people. Being vulnerable is not for the weak, but I promise you it is so worth it. Continue to ignore people who treat you poorly or ignore people who see your vulnerability as a weakness and keep it moving forward because you are a shining light that needs to be seen and experienced on this earth. Anyways, good night. I hope you enjoyed the banana bread as much as I did. I love you so much. Bye!